I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Good evening. Tonight, Sam Shab is visiting uh, a really unique exhibition, um, one that illustrates the fact that photography is not only art, but also uh, a collective memory of humanity. That is an exhibition where Nina uh, Laverta and Natasha Sharemo are displaying works illustrating and recording the beginning of the history of the Mora Museum, which started in the uh, 1980s. And, uh, we ask them to tell us a little bit more about uh, this collection. So, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And, uh, thank you very much for inviting us to this beautiful collection of truly historical pictures. Thank you very much for attention for our work. It was a very interesting time where we came to America and uh, started to develop our art. It was a great opportunity to, um, for all artists, painters, photographers to show us the work in the museum. I remember this time very difficult. It was yesterday. And I think it's a history of this museum came through different periods, but anyway, it was a in a guy's life and help to many people to start their career. And uh, artists of all different mediums, uh, most of them recently came to America at the time and uh, some of them probably not the with us and uh, Yeah, because it was a big wave, huge wave, very important. It's very difficult right now to explain the feelings, our feelings that time. You know that it's, a, uh, it's when you open a cage, even a little bit, yeah? And then you are on another planet. It was absolutely, absolutely different moment from the life in the Soviet Union and everybody was very excited who came to the United States. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible and it's... I, I hope, I hope that, that our portraits and pictures express these feelings. So, uh, what was the feeling? Uh, as I understand, uh, it was about the same time when uh, you also came to America, right? So, how yeah. did it feel to be an artist who just came in America from a completely rigid regime? Uh, I will tell you, it's not only about artists, it's for everybody. Yeah, it's for, yeah, everybody. It's for everybody. You know that it was like you can fly. Something like that. Yeah, it was that feeling that liberating because I came myself a little later in the 90s and it was quite a different switch. It was a switch from a dangerous environment to relatively safe and civilized environment, but definitely not from uh, the dictatorial environment to a political freedom situation. And America was ultimate freedom in many ways exactly. Successful, but it was a part of the 
And then it was an opportunity to be yourself. To be yourself. To forget. To forget. I'm very sorry about Gua and all of this obstacles. And uh, of course, in nineties you can go back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was different in that uh, sense as well. Yeah, but mm -hmm. in our time, it was like a funeral. That nobody knows that you will, you will meet your friends. Yeah, I don't even know if there is any country in the contemporary world where that would be the experience if you immigrate to America from them. But uh, uh, let me ask this, uh, pardon my ignorance, but uh, was you both career photographers in Soviet Union or you started to work with photography here in America? No. no? I was a photographer in Soviet Union. I was a photographer in Soviet Union, more about drama theater, uh, but here I started to do pictures of um, people around me, because I was at the very important to keep some memory of this story. And I thought of Natasha, of course, uh, she was a little singer, and trying to keep this moment, keep this history, was the beauty of an artist. By the way, Nina, do you remember that somebody, I don't know who, organized the courses for photographers from the Soviet Union? Really? Yeah, Dani Ritivo, she, she was a teacher. Yes. Yes? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, for tradition, opening the school for photographers came from the West. Because we didn't have the same. The same kind, the kind of development, everything was a few steps behind the new technique, new, new, new uh, photography life. And to for foundation, I think the crisis, we started the work of the and the daughter of the second immigration. Наташа, все в сборе. Да. У нас вообще все дело в Ну, видите, доехали. Да, мы вдвоем доехали. Yes, I was talking about uh, Tiny Vitivo, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you were saying that uh, she uh, created the very first exhibition of the artists uh, who came from Russia. Um, yeah. Do you remember which year? I think, I think it was maybe 10, 10 participants. Yeah, которые они открыли бесплатно для фотографов с Востока, поскольку наша техника была намного отставала от того развития, которое было здесь уже у фотографического 
искусства. И нас учили, учили работать с фильтрами, другими увеличителями. Другая бумага. Да, ну, если честно. Uh, actually, I actually wanted to ask you uh, about this specifically. I'm uh, an equipment buff, and uh, when you mentioned that uh, they were teaching you in those courses how to use the equipment, that was the first question I wanted to ask. How different was what uh, they was using at the time in Soviet Union from what they was using uh, in America? Because they had pretty good equipment, and then after the war they uh, got a lot of technologies from uh, Zeiss and Leica and incorporated them in Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Paper for style for a number one, two, three, five. And here we can we have a multi how to call it a multi paper which uh, will change the uh, sensitivity. So it is a different step on this Yeah, I don't know enough about film photography and uh, that's really fascinating thing to learn. So what else? How else it was different? How else it was different? The photography in Soviet Union from photography? No, 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 Sasha, that's a too different. To me, there is a, some kind of anecdotes. Two pieces, two appearance. It's absolutely different. So not anything. No, at that time, of course, and, uh, we are telling about what? About equipment. How? You know, in, in Russia, we had Zenit and Leningrad. Uh, and uh, on the west, we had the Hasselblad, Nike and Canon and so on and so on. Oh, the quality is different. I actually uh, happened to hold in my hands the identical copies of German cameras and Soviet copies of that, like Leica and no, uh, Fat for a, one. I had a key for and No, I, I, I had sometimes in Russia I had the Leica. Wow. But it was very primitive uh, on you know, maybe early version mm -hmm. of Leica. Yeah, and here on Nikon or Canon, Nina, I think Nina has it in the Soviet Union. I yeah, I had a Canon just because somebody was mm -hmm. the rest of Canon. And yeah, uh, yeah I had a key. Who it was a how do you break? Key. I'm trying to remember which uh, model, but it, indeed it was a kind of like even lenses was identical to some of very the distinct uh, Lake yeah. versions. It was, it was not a mirror camera. It was a uh, Rachel. Oh, it's interesting. So uh, we're seeing right now actually uh, under the part of the exposition which uh, was created by uh, Natasha, right? The, uh, the ceiling right now under the part of yes, the exhibition yes, yes, with yes, uh, yeah. your work. Yes, so can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the specific works of What? what, what do you do? Do? This no, one, I, for example, this gentleman in cowboy hat and huge glasses, Mikhail Shinakin. Mikhail Shinakin? Yes. Well, she oh, no, I, I, the Mikhail Shinakin alone, yeah. Because she, Sasha. Oh. This one. Ah. Really, I, I, truly, I don't remember about mm -hmm. it. I, I think it was, it was taken at the same time that I took a picture of his wife, ex-wife, maybe wife, the time Rebecca and his daughter. And I think it was taken also in here in this museum during the preparation of the opening of the exhibition. So which one do uh, you think is the most interesting and historically significant? All of them. All of them. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Okay, so let's I'm go sure. with the most provocative one. How about uh, this? No, no, uh, yes, sorry. No, no problem. No, I, I think that the most provocative is a picture where um, Glazer is kissing Sydney. That probably is the one I was looking at. Uh, yeah. Jackman saying a uh, yeah. t shirt New York and the other one is kissing Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
it's sometimes the, the feeling of the uh, glacier is in this picture. No. So. no, I don't think that this portraits are provocative. I don't think so. I the base one definitely is, but uh, uh, looking at the car languages, as I understand, uh, at least all of them are artists uh, who uh, are. In the yeah, color images, yeah, that's actually teaching. In the color images, there is, a, I think, very interesting uh, picture of Rima Gerlovina. But, uh, and, but my favorite is a, is a photo of Nina. Is there, uh, this is the one, huh? Yeah, that's my favorite. So, what is so special about it for you? Well, you, you see. Nina, Nina is looking, I will say, he is waiting for something. Maybe for next day, maybe for next month, maybe for next year, the future. Um, as I understand. And Ola, and Ola, who is a collector, he is smiling, they are not together, um, you know. As I understand, this one is uh, Vitaly Kamara and Alexander Milanit in front of their walls, right? Yeah, while sitting. While sitting. No, but I'm always trying to... Yes, but I don't have any very good photo of and Milamid. I'm always trying to put some kind of irony or game, yes, some kind of light feeling.
Okay, so uh, this is the part of the expedition uh, which was created by Nina, and uh, she has lots to say about the photographs. Before we started to record the show, there was few words said. And uh, if I may, uh, I would like to start with this particular work. Yes, it is, very, it is the very beginning of um, exhibition first in a museum which is called Museum of Unofficial Russian Art. And that's people prepare this exhibition. Here is a, Sasha Alexander Glazer, who is director of this museum. And um, painters brought him a lot of works, and some works was not um, without any explanation of what is it. And uh, this couple of painters, uh, Zoya Limer Krasnovsky and Alexei Krasnovsky, they helped. So he's sitting together and try to um, make the title to everyone uh, pictures in the exhibition, which was unknown. So, again, this is the question, which one is your favorite? Difficult to say because, um, for example, I love very much uh, this picture and um, Oleg like it. So hopefully you like it, this picture. I did this picture in Paris, um, and it was a very uh, interesting trip. And I uh, visited his, and he said, ah, but I cannot do anything. I would like to paint something different. But when I start, it just this face. <laughs> oh, it's actually really interesting way to talk about the creative process, but... That is my best friend in America, Zoya Limer Krasnovsky. Um, already, we met and already, I think, 39 years ago. That's a beautiful couple. Unfortunately, <laughs> some people who are looking, we pictured, not, it's not with us anymore. This is Alec Pachel, this is Natasha Sharunova. Alec was perfect person yeah, and handsome like man who yeah. wrote with uh, a lot of new American newspaper. Uh, and uh, that's, that's um, this picture is just, you know, just interesting because it's all people, all painters together. It was an exhibition of Axkar and he was a Kravinitskaya and a lot of painters who came just to the exhibition. And at the time of the 80s, 80s, end of the 70s, 80s, uh, painters came to every exhibition. We actually have uh, somebody very peculiar. As I understand, you're the owner of the apartment where this Many years ago. So he was also involved in this uh, circle of uh, the artists around the... I was not aware of the establishment, but I established the museum. Sure. Alex. What about this one? Uh, Mikhail, there is something very special about this one. Uh, of course, so I don't remember exactly. There probably was some exhibition here. Just like it's a slide. Oh, You're definitely beautiful lighting, yes. and uh, the way I understand the character, the, the personality, the, 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 the picture. And uh, when I was looking at this group photo, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the whole artwork was just different. Somehow felt differently. Different 
Just to show how they belong to the art, or the art belongs to the artist. Thank you very much. Thank you. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.